Now, let's enter into a new topic called visualizing 3D in 2D. What do you mean by 3D or 2D? When I call it with 3D, I refer to this as three dimensional. When I write 2D, I refer to this as two dimensional. But what do you mean by three dimensional or two dimensional? Is one of the biggest question when we discuss about the topic visualizing 3D in 2D. We all have seen a 3D movie in the theaters. The movie which you generally see on a 70mm screen in general in most of the theaters is a 2D picture. But some of the movies which are shown are given with the name 3D. So what makes the difference between a 3D movie or a 2D movie is how we understand this concept. The 3D is that we have in this case of two dimensional I have two axes x and y for two dimensional I have two axes x and y so it is always referred with x and y axis whereas the three dimensional is referred with three axes x y and z it's something like this you have x y and z so when it comes to this concept of understanding three dimensional that means anything which occupies space in general sense is called a three dimensional object so when i take a picture say for example i take a box i visualize this as a box but this is not exactly a box this is a box drawn on the board which is visualized as a three dimensional object so when i take this i understand this to be a box because i can feel it in general i can feel this in air and i can hold it and this has been occupying some space therefore in this room i call this as a three dimensional object but when i draw the same picture on the board say i just draw this is a two dimensional picture of this three dimensional box so this is a 3d object and i visualize this 3d object as a 2d object on the board is how i understand between two dimensional and three dimensional why don't i call this as three dimensional object i only visualize this to be a three dimensional object why why is it not 3d is the biggest question out here why not 3d because I cannot move this box into the air and feel it. This does not occupy space in air, but this occupies space on the board. So this is a two dimensional picture of a three dimensional object, a box which I have taken in this case. So therefore, this is how I understand between a two dimensional picture, which is visualized as a three dimensional object, but actually it is not a three dimensional object. It is only visualization. The actual three-dimensional object of this two-dimensional picture drawn on the board is this, occupying space in the air. Now, coming to this concept, so in general, mathematically, we define three-dimensional object as that object which occupies space in air, that is, which is along all the three axes, x, y, and z axis. And two-dimensional object is along only x and y axis. So if you just take one more example, let me take this book or a diary which I have. Now, if I take each of the page, if I take each of the page, rectangular page, and then I join each of the page, then I construct with each of the page a cuboid or a book. So a cuboid is obtained by putting each of the sheet on one over the other on the top so that I get a three-dimensional cuboid from each of the rectangular piece of paper or a rectangular sheet. So uh, this is how I visualize where one sheet over the other would construct a cuboid. So construction of a cuboid is that when you take a two-dimensional plane surface and add it infinite number of times until the height h, then I get the total cuboid, a three-dimensional object. So that is one more way of understanding the construction of three dimension or the difference between a 3D and a 2D object. So that is how 
a 3D and a 2D object concept is understood in this concept. Now, when it comes to 3D object properties, we have already discussed about two dimensional objects like quadrilateral, triangle, a rhombus, a parallelogram, a trapezium and various other properties in plane figures of two dimensional objects. Similarly, we have some properties for three dimensional objects like a cube, a cuboid, a prism or many other objects which are called geometrical solids. The difference between two dimensional and three dimensional objects are that three dimensional objects are solids. So as solids which occupy space in air. So in this case, when we understand the three dimensional objects, there are three important key factors we understand indirectly for three dimensional objects. One is the points or we call them as vertices and the edges and the faces. So the vertices, edges and faces make a three dimensional object or a geometrical, three dimensional geometrical solid. So these three make a three dimensional geometrical solid. So to construct a geometrical solid which is three dimensional, I need the vertices, I need the edges and I need the faces. Say for example how this can be constructed, let's construct a cube using these concepts. So when I take this, let's construct a cube which is a three dimensional object. We all know that this is a sort of a cube where all sides are squares. Each of the face is a square. So before we construct, let's take into consideration the vertices of points. Now where I have this, I first take the points which are edges, which are the vertices. So these are the points are the endpoints which are taken in case of a cube. So this is one of the endpoint that is one of the vertex and here is one of the endpoint 1, 3 and 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 is 1 which I have taken as 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I have taken the side 2, 1, 2. Then I have taken the other 2, 1, 2 and then finally 1, 2. So totally I have 4 edges on the top, 4 endpoints on the top and four endpoints on the bottom. So totally a cube has eight endpoints counting from one, two, three, four, and then at the back, five, six, seven, and eight. So these are the endpoints which are called vertices for a three-dimensional geometrical solid. So when I take the example of a three-dimensional geometrical solid, which is a cube, I have totally eight points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which are taken, which are the vertices of the dimensional object and once we know the endpoints we can construct the edges now what are the edges for a cube or any other three dimension three dimensional geometrical solid the edges are the lines connected between the endpoints suppose i take say this face in this face this line connecting the two endpoints is one of the edge of a cube now this endpoint and this endpoint when connected through a line is called another edge edge number three edge number four so how many edges are there for this cube? Edge 1, edge 2, edge 3 and edge 4 and then turn back 5, 6, 7, 8 is one more and then 9, 10. This is already included and then 11 and 12. So there are totally 12 edges which are there in case of a cube. So each of the edge is obtained by connecting the pair of endpoints, adjacent endpoints which you are connecting. So this is how the edges are formed, where the face turns. Edge is the junction where the face of the cube turns. So this is turning at an angle because you have an edge here. So edge is indirectly referred as the junction where the face of the three-dimensional geometrical solid changes its direction. So when I take the edges, I have, these are the edges, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So totally, I have 12 of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. If I count them, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So here are 12 edges and here are the points which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So here there are 8 points, 12 edges and let's come to the faces. Now how are the faces formed? The faces are formed by the regions or the surface between the edges is nothing but the face. So if I take the edges of this, then the surface between the four edges is nothing but one face of the cube. Then this face between the edges is another face of the cube. And if I take these four edges, then the four edges have some region in between, which is the surface, which is called the face of the cube. So totally, if I count the number of faces, I find that there are totally one, two, three, four. And then on the top, which is five, and the bottom, which is six. So totally four lateral faces, and one on the top and one in the bottom, which make totally four plus two, this is six faces. So this is how a cube is formed with different faces. So this is how a cube is formed between the edges. So if I take the four edges, then the region with, between the four edges is called phase one. And this is called phase two. And phase three, four, five, six. The other three faces are not visible because the direction is in this. But as I take the box, I can clearly see all the six faces. One, two, three, four, five and six and the six faces which I find in this. So in case of a cube, I identify that there are eight vertices, 12 edges and six faces is how I understand the properties of three dimensional objects. Three dimensional objects are always constructed from points and then to edges and then to the faces then this forms a solid three-dimensional geometrical object. So this is how a three-dimensional geometrical solid is constructed from step one to step two, finally to step three, is how I understand. And also, I can also identify the number of vertices, number of edges, and number of faces for each of the objects by counting them through the visualization of a three-dimensional object.